Welcome to Power Up, the uptime podcast focused on the new hot off the press technology that can change the world. Follow along with me, Alan Hall, and Itasaur's Phil Totaro as we discuss the weird, the wild, and the game-changing ideas that will charge your energy future. All right, Fabric Air Canada. Phil, the, our friends up in Canada have been working on some tools for their de-icing systems. Yes, and what's kind of really interesting and novel about this is they developed a system that allows them to kind of uh, punch holes into some of the bulkheads um, and ribs along the length of the blade so that they can actually install this um, kind of, if you're not familiar with Fabric Air, they have this kind of fabric tube um, that runs the length of the blade and uh, circulates hot air to be able to de-ice the blade. But in order to install it and retrofit it on older blades, you have to have a way that you can kind of, you know, drill drill a hole through some of the bulkheads and the ribs in the blade. Uh, and so their their latest patent that came up in our um, technology trend watch and research this week um, indicates um, that they've you know developed a new system that could even be uh, kind of remote operated by uh, a little rover. Uh, drone that they could kind of send down the length of the blade and have this thing kind of drill out the the bulkheads. And that tool can be used for other things besides this de-icing system, right? If you're putting holes in blades, allows access for a lot of other things to go up in a blade, right? Including repairs on um, a lightning uh, conduction system, uh, for example, or just running any other uh, things that you might need to down the length of the blade. Um, you may need to install some aero updates that would require some some work in turn on the internal uh, shell um, or the inside of the shell of the blade, uh, and so this would also facilitate uh, facilitate that. So it's uh, it's pretty clever. The technology they describe in their patent is focused on Senvion blades, but this could be used in almost any wind turbine. Blade. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, the the reason that they did that with Senvion is because they actually are. Um, working with Nergica up in uh, Quebec, which if you're not familiar, the Nergica's um, independent research organization that actually has two Senvion turbines at their facility um, where Fabric Air, through this partnership with, with Nergica, has actually tested this, uh, this technology. So um, it's pretty great. Next up is ITREK from the Netherlands, and they have a offshore blade installation technique or tool uh, that they developed. And it's, it looks like a praying mantis almost that grabs onto the tower. And then you take the blade on the back of the praying mantis up to the hub and kind of plug in the, the blade that way into the hub. What's kind of unique and interesting about this innovation is what they're doing is it, they've created a system where you can actually have this um, crane structure um, on the service and operation vessel, the vessel comes up to the turbine and the foundation kind of clamps on and then deploys this railing system that'll clamp up to the upper part of the tower. And then you can have, you know, the blade, which is, you know, in this clamp, um, run up this little track um, that's kind of, you know, a removable, uh, this removable track. And then, like you said, it'll it'll spin the blade around and orient it in in the right position, um, in order to to get it uh, installed and hooked up into the into the hub. Um, so, of all the ideas I've seen about having this kind of um, you know construction or service and repair type of system, this is actually one of the more clever ones. Um, but keep in mind that this company um, in Holland that's developed the technology, they, this is just a patent at this point. They are trying to um, you know, get somebody interested in uh, prototyping this and, and actually commercially developing it. Um, so we hope that they're successful with it um, because this actually is pretty, not only pretty clever, um, but it's, it's something that's probably a little easier to implement and safer to implement than some of the other um, concepts that we've seen. And we're going to move down to Spain now, Phil, with uh, Breedy Mint Marine Time. And they have a, a, a patent that just come out, which talks about building a floating structure, a floating wind turbine structure 
but it's a series of walls uh, that get assembled into like this triangular shape. And you want to describe this a little bit? It's kind of modular in the sense that they they can do something keyside where they can assemble, you know, whatever the structure is and with, you know, the levels of buoyancy that they need for, for you know, the, the size of turbine they're going to install. Um, they can assemble this keyside and then kind of bolt it together um, as it's kind of going in the water, and then you can take, you know, with your keyside crane and plop the turbine kind of fully assembled on this thing and then float it out. Um, so it's it's pretty clever in terms of what they're doing, and then the way they've designed it, it can either serve as a, a moored floating structure or kind of like a almost a tension-like platform where you would have different, um, you know, legs, you know, uh, tethered legs basically, um, coming off the bottom of this thing. This is kind of a, a very early stage innovation at this point, and we hope that they can, can pursue it. There's obviously a lot of different, um, you know, floating, um, structure designs and concepts out there already, but, um, this is one that actually has some promise based on the modularity of it. Um, and the fact that you could actually assemble it keyside with whatever, um, kind of structure you needed to, to be able to assemble, um, for, for, you know, something that's purpose built for a particular turbine model. Last but not least, Phil, the motorized ice cream cone. Hey, th this patent technology needs to be applied rapidly because from base of what the sketches show, this is pretty cool. All right. So this isn't strictly speaking wind energy, but um, we're going to try to find some of these uh, fun patents that uh, people have uh, come up with over the years. So this one, it's it's real interesting. Um, there's actually, basically the, the premise of it is you can have your ice cream in a little cup on top of your cone, and the cone has a little gear mechanism in it. So that I, Sorry, I can't even get through this without laughing. But <laughs> it'll... It'll automatically rotate the, the your ice cream so that you can just stick your tongue out and lick. <laughs> and you don't have to hand rotate your ice cream cone and worry about the ice cream dripping down on, on your hands. So, you know, I, I've, I've seen lots of things that are over-engineered in my time. This is probably one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but this is also, um, you know, a pretty clever idea. I don't know that the world needs this, Alan. There's upsides and downsides to this, Phil. One is that you don't have to do anything to eat your ice cream, I guess, besides hold it. Downside is you need a battery, right? So without the battery, this thing doesn't go. So it doesn't didn't seem to have a USB port to charge it. <laughs> USB port to charge it. <laughs> That's the next patent, a USB chargeable ice cream cone. There you go. Like everything else in the world. <laughs> you think the Europeans are going to make us use a USB-C or a USB lightning cable? Huh? Which one is it? Uh, USB-C. No, they, they've already decided. Everything, everything's everything got to be standardized. Well, there you have it. There's uh, three really interesting wind patents and one crazy patent for you this week. Thanks, Phil, for bringing these ideas to the table. <laughs> 